Good afternoon, guys. It's been and gal. This is Jamie Fang coming to you from Norman's Orchids, orchids.com. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, it's under Norman's Orchids, correct? Subscribe. Don't be a loser. Subscribe. Um, anyway, it's been a while um, since I've been on because I think you guys are pretty tired of me. <laughs> And I hear myself echo. Anyways, do you testing? Jeff, I need you to show this picture. So last week I was doing a lot of um, custom work um, for a client. Um, we did a kind of a chartreuse blue pastel color theme um, that was off a of Rolex that they were giving to um, the 60 year old lady. So today, we have a different project. This one will be FedEx out on Monday to somewhere in Texas. So these are the, when I get a custom, sometimes they said just make something. Sometimes I have to work with color scheme. So this is the color scheme we're working on today. And to, to work with me, the rules are simple. Budget, color scheme, and direction of the range. And the rest, and then, shut up. and then be quiet. And then sign your bill. Because I need to be able to have the freedom to design and the freedom to choose the best plants, right? Because, you know, you, Miss Hannah, hush. So this is the color I'm working with. And this will be shipped out. So I don't have the luxury of picking a really um, container that will break in the shipment. You know, we all see what FedEx does with our package. So anyway, so with, with the color scheme in mind, I picked the yellow. So when you first do arrangement, um, you want to make sure for the newbies, new members that's probably watching this for the first time, for all the members that have been with us since day one, what is it, three and a half years ago now, Jeff? Um, since 2020, we, it's probably, yeah. What did we do, April or May? Something like that. April, right? So. Yeah, so it's three and a half years you guys have been with us, and we've been faithfully on every week, except you know now the world's open and Norman's escaping. So this is episode 129. 129, yeah. Um, the pre I'll behave myself, so this pre-show will be on YouTube. Um, sometimes I do stuff just for the members without I'm wearing, sharing to the rest of the world my tricks. So again, this is very generic. I'm picking a tin container. Obviously, it won't break. Um, you always want to line your container, regardless if it's waterproof or not, you always want to line your container, even if it's crackle container. If there's crackles in there, there's ways to seep water out, and you don't want to destroy your table. So I did a pl hard, copy, uh, hard plastic, then I did some wood chip. So if it's excess water, it will go down versus sitting on paper, which will smell. A wood chip will smell too, but it's not as bad. So. This is going to be laid down in FedEx box, so everything is going to be one way, okay? And I picked the colors to go with our um, scheme. So I'm just going to kind of quickly put this together. And sometimes I change my mind. Sometimes I'll move things around if I don't like it, just to keep it up. And this is a good, a fairly good budget. So I have to put as much as I can in such a small space because the, our dot-com boxes is only a certain size. So now I pretty much just started my backdrop, okay? And I'm working with yellow because it looks like the car says is kind of a fall color, right, Jeff? Did you see it yes. earlier? It's more yellow green cream color so it's it's typical fall color i will post that and put it with our arrangement so whenever you shove a container in you don't want to shove by the stem because you could break it so you always shove it by the bottom then put your hand right on the on the pot to nest it tight to shove it in okay so well saying that i hope i didn't break this spike. that was just the bamboo so and make sure your, your plants are well watered because once it's in, you really don't want to take this apart. And again, when you do a container, you want it to be level 
You don't want to shove it too tight, so when you water, it's, it's going to go into the crown. So we want to prevent crown rot. So the plant should be up above like this, up on the top of the rim. So I'm recycling. These are just bags from my artificial stick, so I'm going to put it inside. I have to be able to see what I'm doing, so. I like to use plastic, so if they're not, if they're soaking on newspaper, it will smell, right? So I'm just recycling what I took out from the, the artificial sticks. How are we doing so far, Joe? So far, so good. Do we have anybody on? Yes. Okay, so the, the way, the, the top secret, there's really no secret to do an arrangement, but how do you face the arrangement? You always take your first flower, very first flower on the bottom, that dictates which way the flower should go, uh, direction-wise. So this is on the bottom, so that tells me it wants to go left, right? Because a lot of people don't know to, to pay attention to that, they start doing it the wrong way, and they, Instead of having four flowers for show, they did it for three flowers for show. So you want to maximize the show of everything, right? If that makes sense. Your first original flower dictates what side it should be facing. And that's very important. A lot of people in the industry doesn't even know how to do that. Or doesn't understand that is a detail you need to focus on. So... Any questions, Joe? No, I think you already covered it, but I'm going to ask again. So when somebody orders, do they tell you what they're looking for? Like they want it just facing one way? They want it a 360 arrangement? They like don't what know. are the different options? They don't know. Usually if you're any good at it and you want it to do the best you can, you ask these questions because most people when they order, they don't know what they're asking. But what do you ask them? Do you, do you ask first them? Thing, first thing I ask is, hi, what occasion is this for, right? Is it a birthday? Is it a funeral? You know? Mm -hmm. If it's a funeral, for Asians, you know, we don't do color. Under, um, I think, 80, we don't do color, not, not a festive color. So that's always the first thing I ask. You know, if it's Jewish, we do white. You know, we always ask that at the shop. That's the first thing we ask. What is it for, right? Whatever, it's just for pretty. And then, I could do whatever I want. But that's the first question. The second question is, what is your budget? Because I don't want to make $800. Oh, no, it's too much. And then you shrink it down. Five, oh, it's still too much. So get to the point. How much is your budget? I really don't care. I just want to do it so I don't have to take it apart three times. And I don't entertain taking things apart. So you ask the occasion, the price range. Then you said, is it 360? Is it going to be on a centerpiece? Is it 360 around? Because you don't want to make a 360 and then go people put it against the wall, then they hit it and it breaks it. You know, there, there goes half the value. So that's the third question I ask. So the next question is, do you have a color scheme? And then after that, step away, go have coffee, and come back and sign your receipt. That's how it works. Right? Because people don't know they need to tell you all that. They just say, I want something pretty. They don't even tell you it's for my mom, it's my mother-in-law, it's going for a service. And then you just do all that and you tour around for half an hour doing something that's not what they want and nobody's happy, so. So you just gotta know to ask the questions, basically. So my problem is, how do I make this look like the value of what they're paying? And if it's locally, I could hang things, I could have sticks, like I did the last job, we had a what was it, a six feet tall sticks cut. We had orchids hanging and then we had lights, right? But I don't have that luxury. I'm gonna make it this way, by the time they go to shipping, they're gonna go this way, right? So now is my, my way to figure out how am I gonna make it look like it's worth that, what they're paying for. So this is, I think this is pretty good at their color scheme. What do you think, Jeff? I think it's gonna fit right in. Right? This is the color scheme I was given. Yeah, it looks, it's those colors. These are the colors, right? So now is my trick to make it look like in, in, indulge and then try to make it in, embellish the, the worth of it, right? At first in my mind, I'm thinking I'm gonna do more of these hanging, but 
I can't. It's going to be laying down. So I can't do that. So what do I? What am I going to do? Well, if you have old silk flowers around and you don't know what to do with it, use it, right? So instead of moss, we're going to use these artificial color that is the same color as our pictures, right? Oh, I can't slam on that because Roger always scream at me for slamming it because it's too loud on the camera. We just hear a really loud pop. Pop, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I was not well because I had a flu shot <laughs> and then I had a cold right away. You know how that works. I just got mine yesterday or the day before. Yeah, so I had t I had to test myself for COVID because I was having all these meetings, you know, in a closed space with people. So again, you want it to be cohesive flower uh, colors, but yet not take away from your main arrangement, right? Because that's the goal. Your orchid is your main thing. So I just went around and grabbed stuff, whatever I could find. These things are what we brought home from the shop what, like five years ago. And NT always asked me, why do you have stuff that's not orchid related, you know? So we did every arrangement we do, when I do them, she comes and stand by me because she's thinking she could just, you know, learn everything, right? But every arrangement for me is different, right? But then I'm teaching her how to think outside her box, right? Well, having the shop downtown for so many years, I think you've done more arrangements than anybody, right? A anybody, even the top designers cannot do orchid arrangement. I cannot understand that. It's like Eric does 5,000 square feet orchid display, but he can't do a silk arrangement because everybody has limitation to what they know. He can't do a silk because he doesn't know or have the patience. I don't think he cannot do it. He just doesn't have the patience to, to have something silk to come alive. It's a lot of work. You have to twirl the petals and bend the spike. It's the, the same way. So now I just tuck all my plastic in. Right, and then we have all these that um, clip that eventually I would have to change it to um, twist tight because you can't let it go out like that. Jeff, can I have the brown wire or something over there? Please. <coughs> Where's that? Is there any brown wire? Oh, there's a little bit. Yeah, that's good. That's all I need. Toss it. So when I'm doing the FedEx thing, it's a lot different than just doing something that somebody pick up, you know, messenger come pick up or the client come pick up. So you have to imagine everything will be tied down, taped down, and the arrangement will actually will be covered with brown tape or paper sleeve to, to tie all the moss down. So can you imagine you, you undo the paper sleeve and then everything falls apart. So I'm tying some of this stuff down. <coughs> So every arrangement you do and the situation is different, you have to adjust to it. Right, Hannah? Hi, baby. Hannah just had her grooming section in Beverly Hill. So here, I'm using silk hydrangea. All the colors that we're pulling from the that's a birthday card, by the way. That's why she wanted everything to match the birthday card. These people are really matching to the T. So instead of just putting it in there, when they unwrap it from the brown paper, they take it apart, all this stuff is gonna take apart, but I actually tied it down. I went the extra step. So we're not using your typical green moss or anything that, we're even using all these silk elements to finish the base. So we will distinguish ourselves from the regular people that does this. This is why they're calling me versus ordering something from Texas. And I use everything. I don't spare it apart and throw it in the trash. If you have it, use it. It's all money. So I'm just tying it with the brown 
octopus tie. So I could tie it down to a stem and stuff. So since this is a, what is this, 280? You call this a 280 range on the frontage? I don't have to worry about the back as much. So again, I tied it down. So when it, when the paper, when they undo the paper bag, it will not. Everything will not just fall out of it. And these are just little beaded strain. You'll find stuff like this. I don't know, even party shop or dollar stores, whatever. You know, um, New Orleans are more beads. These are more square thing. So I'm just gonna twirl these things through. I'll finish the major details later. So now I'm using the color scheme that they picked to to kind of enlarge my arrangement as you can. Because I really don't have space. It's not like I'm cheap, don't want to put any more orchids, but I really don't have space to do so. <clears throat> And you gotta imagine, everything has to be shipped to you. So, you know, you can't just be pretty by the time people get it, everything falls apart. There's no instruction of putting, you know, these are not flower people. You, there's no like, please put hydrangea left side onto the left side or right side. There's not a puzzle. So you want it for them to get it and it's pretty. It's nice, huh? And I have done stuff that, for the same party, ten or twenty thousand dollar. But every arrangement has to be different. That's why I have so much stuff in my shop. Can you imagine doing the whole house? You can't have just one design, one 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 type of. If it's for a bathroom, you got to match the bathroom color. I've done sets design. I had to match the color of the sofa or so whatever they want me to match. Sometimes it could be a painting they want me to match, or the actually it should be like an inspiration to go off and make your own a lot of my set designer when i do movie sets and tv sets before they will just send me a picture of a library and say that this is where i need to be go for it and here's a budget and then you work with sony and people like that there isn't a budget just do it <clears throat> And when you do arrangement, you're not ask, asking to be validated to see if it's pretty. If you said it's pretty, it's pretty. This is your arra arrangement. There's no, you're not doing a copy and paste, right? You're doing your own style. So there, there isn't like, do you think this is pretty? It may not be pretty if you hate yellow, right? <laughs> but it will be for pretty for my client because it matches their color scheme. So I never worry about if this is pretty. And using these sticks will actually help you hold the, the, um, the plants to where you like it to be. Like I'm trying to yank this spike back a little bit. Yeah, the other arrangement I had it where they could just turn it on. There was it was the party was at night, so they had lights um, all throughout. A very pretty, gentle little white flower with lights on it, LED. So they were thrilled with the last one. And these are actually new client, um, a client's a client's friend. So of course they were very nervous. To last arrangement was fifteen hundred. They were very nervous to see what I was going to do if it's going to be worth their money. So I had a conversation with them. If you don't trust me, please don't work with me. I don't know how to make sure you understand you could trust me. So we had that one conversation, 
and they immediately asked me to do, instead of sending them from Texas for us, they wanted me to custom something for them to be shipped on Monday. What do you think, Jeff? I like it. Good? Yeah. So, I think it matches what uh -huh. you're asking me to do. But now we've got to introduce a little bit more green back to the picture. You see it? I should have plastered this picture up, but when I do it, then we'll do a, a side by side picture. So we would have to introduce a little bit more green to this. Otherwise it's getting too yellow. And when you introduce silk and stuff, it's almost like you're doing a floral arrangement. So when you when you do arrangement, you also need to have a little bit basic on how to do a cut flower arrangement. And I never had a, I'm a business major, as Norman liked to explain to you guys over and over again. <laughs> Everything i done is what I've seen, I, I like to take in what I see in magazines and stuff. I'm free spirit, free, free school. So I learn everything from what I see in the magazine and you don't want to be one that copies anything because that you never could copy it well enough. Even when I do a pair, it's very hard to do a second one. Auntie always says, so, the first one's always prettier. Of course, the first one's always prettier. Now these are all nature stuff. It's very hard to get everything to be the same size, same height all going the same way, right? See, now are we getting closer, Jeff? We got a little bit more green in there. But now we're not doing any moss. If it's here, I will be doing rocks. But we can't scent rocks. This is a birthday? Yeah, I, I don't know what this is. And they text me and say, uh, this is somebody who's famous. And I'm like, I don't care. You gave me the budget. And they said, do you think that budget's enough? I said, it's enough for shipping. If it's locally, you know your budget's not enough because I would do it more elaborate, right? And when I do a design, it's because almost like I really enjoy doing it. You know, it's not about the money. It's, mo it's about how I'm making it look pretty within the budget and then some. Or what? Your arrangement. For what? I don't know, but he's been eyeing it. Well, it's not going out till Monday. You can't take it to your house. You got four crazy cats. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been to Norman's house? I'm afraid to go in there. Paintings are lopsided. Everything is off. Everything is off. Yeah, and then some. Free, free spirit to the point that everything is falling apart. Oh, they can open the cabin, Christmas cabin. Oh, aren't they smart? Oh, they are so good. Hey, Norman, they have this thing how you tie down the cabinets. No. The other day, um, yesterday, Grandpa says Hannah actually put away her own toy. No. She yeah. did. She did. She went to put her own toys back before we picked her up because they can't oh. find it. And they said they couldn't find this one toy, and they went to the their toy bin, and she had already put it back. I was like, oh, really? She never do that at my house. <coughs> oh, that's good. So I'm using really soft, um, very, um, what? Do, how do you say it? Movable stick. So if they lay it down, it won't be flexible. so s flexible there you go thank you i'm still under the weather a little bit i know Paige texts me are you okay because you're not posting you're not doing anything you know frankly i just got a lot on my plate lately so yeah these are very flexible so they could do whatever you know it won't damage the plant but they still give me a little bit of a height Is everybody bored? No. 
any suggestions? And you can take that whole thing and lay it down in one box and yeah. chip it. Yep. Yep. I sure can. I will go back and finish off. Um, see, all the, the green just adds more. I think this is really perfect from what our color scheme is, don't you think, Jeff? Yeah, the green adds more depth to you it. You have to. It's, it was starting to get really, really yellow by yellow hot cream yellow by, and then the yellow beaded, these are plastic beaded blocks, sort of, square pieces. We're, we're putting more green up because to, to break off the yellow, soap being so yellow. And this is a nice um, green to take, not a chartreuse or neon green. So this essentially will meet perfectly. Then I also pull these. Don't know if I'll use these, but I may. Oh, let's see. Um, are we going over time? I could paste, put a picture up when I'm done. I think it's okay. It's okay. Well, just give me a few more minutes where we'll be done. I don't want to take all day. Girls got things to do. Oh, um, Eric and Auntie's going to Asia next week, so I'll pretty much, pretty much be here almost every day. Yeah, it's because. Oh no, I'm just saying like we'll probably be doing more every day like if I'm here. Oh no, I'm here. I can't tie. I can't cut. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? I'll probably be doing more like um, posting, you know? From the nursery, yeah. And we'll do more live. And we also might be, I'm not jumping this weekend. So since I might be busy working here, I might just do some tree jumps. Oh, I think this is working out good, Jeff. Linda says, what a gorgeous arrangement. Wendy says, it's looking spectacular. Yeah, but they're biased. They always like anything I make. I don't think they ever hated anything I made. Uh, that one Christmas when you made us wear the... <laughs> what? The goofy hats with the reindeer yeah. antlers flapping in our face. That Everybody was a good hated hit. that. No, they did not. Oh, I thought they did. No, they didn't hate that. They loved that. They love it when I make you guys look funny. Maybe I just hated it. You hated it. They didn't hate it. They thought it was fabulous. Well, these are kind of arrangements you'll see in hotels and stuff. I mean. Not like that. I've never been to a hotel and seen anything like that. Well, I did the, the one hotel. I did the high roller state. I the rooms and stuff so I would teach the designer to do stuff because they really can't afford me to be their own staff all the time so I would go in there and train them to do stuff like this orchid is very particular they don't know how to do it I don't know why it's so easy if the high designer could do you know five feet tall here Jeff I really can't I don't have the right clipper this we have a bigger clipper for this kind of thing it's called the lock cutter See how hard that was? Mm -hmm. This one's got like four wires inside. So holidays are coming. You know, you guys could do this for your tables. It's kind of hard to do stuff when you're backwards. You could do this for your dining room table. You how could. Many, that was one, two, three, four, five. There's not six, that many seven, orchids. Maybe eight orchids? Yeah. That's not too bad. No, no, no. But and a I lot of filler. And a lot of filler. And then it could be fillers that you had in your closet that you have forever and you're really tired of the soak arrangement, the soak in your house because he's been there for 20 years. I suggest just, with the soak flour, you don't want to wet it and wash it. I, I kind of brush it off really quickly with my hand dry hand, brush it off. And then I take a bottle of Pocon, you know, the leaf shine and spray it and it just whoof, puff it up. 
Never make the mistake to go dump it in water and try to clean it because it just kind of adds on, cake it on to the flour, the silk flour. Yeah, so when I'm off, I'm just gonna go through and cut these things, do my twist tie right now, they're in clips, but I think we have done as much as we can to it. So you don't wanna overdo it, then it becomes messy. So we had, we have actually four, four inch, Jeff, four, four inch yellow plant, but I picked double obviously, cause I need as much show. Mm -hmm. Then we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have a total of nine plants oh, nine. in here. Okay not bad but we made it look larger but these these beaded stuff kind of give it a 3d dimension and now we have all that see the first if you look at this arrangement do you see the accessory first or do you see the orchids first orchids if you see the orchids first and i did a hundred percent good job on it if you see all the accessory first and then you trail to the orchids and i failed i failed this arrangement miserably but so whenever you do it, always make sure your focus is on your orchids. Like anything we do, if this is what you need to do, you attack your focus. Everything else just falls into it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I brought these out. I didn't get to use it, but I want to show you. And you don't have to use these fancy stuff. I just happen to have these around. So, oh, great. And I always get the right accessory to cut things with. That, this is what I did for the, whenever you see me hanging stuff off in midair, which is, you're not gonna show the plastic cup, right? So basically you would take, it could be a fabric, it could be a birch, it could whatever color you work with. Then you kind of tie this on it. And then you can start hanging it off, right? It's really pretty. And then to do that, so how do you hang? How do you hang a plant onto midair without gluing it down or tying it down more, right? So basically, you're going to take a really thick wire. Supposedly, we're supposed to tie this down, right? And I usually, well, you could use a green wire instead of a brown wire so it doesn't show. But I'm working with what I got right now. course tie it to the back because you don't want your knot to be in the front so every little detail helps may not be important but as soon as you start finishing it every little flaws will emphasize five times right and then how are you gonna perch that so basically you're gonna through the back of course you're not gonna put it through the front you're gonna put a wire through I should do it this way, but it's very hard. Okay, poke it through that hole. Cut the bottom. Make your little L, just so it doesn't go through, right? So you're basically making a hanger, right? Now you have a pot. A stem right here and you can loop it pull it onto your sticks or your trellis or whatever right you see me done these big arranging but yet sometimes I have more hanging on top than I have in the base so this way it'll just be perched on right you could actually clip it on so this is how you're gonna make things is hang everywhere actually if, it, if you want to be elaborate you could do this and then hang it on your rod or your curtains and then you have an instant orchid cool and sometimes when I do a party before and they really have no budget for a benefit I use a plastic saucer underneath so the orchid sitting in there I wrap this on and then that's it that's your tabletop display you don't need a pot and it's you know a third of a price right there you go you have this on your buffet table with some um, candles, lit up battery candles around. And if you really want to be fancy, you could get a dome and you just put it through and on the coffee table, and then you have a centerpiece. So the, there's, there's no right way or wrong way to do it. It's all about budget and what you're able to spend on these centerpieces or for your home. 
like I said, you don't have to go out. I didn't go out and look for anything. I just kind of grabbed what I have, and everything was all dusty. It's been here for years, but it, it fits this ring. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Norman Fang with Norman Truck Industry, and today is our 129th episode. And today's, uh, we're going to revisit on the Fernandes Bernina, and it's hybrid. And it's really, it's really special because I, many of you know, I was invited and also speak at the Penang Orchid Show in Malaysia last month. So it's always uh, one of my top uh, bucket lists because this is where uh, Malaysia is, is home of a lot of the Fernandes uh, novelty species, the Bernina and Violacea where they come from. So I was at uh, the Penang Shore is actually at Georgetown uh, an Island, right off the, uh, one of the uh, island next to Borneo, part of Malaysia. And it's just lovely. And I had no idea it was so way out south because, because I was traveling from Taiwan, which is, I uh, have a middle of uh, equator, divided by island by half, travel to Singapore. And from Singapore, I have another hour flight from Singapore. So Penang or, or Malaysia Park is actually in the middle of uh, the, the south of the, the equator, right? So what does that mean? Uh, warm day, warm night, and there's only one season. It's pretty much summer over there. So knowing the where the species come from is very important for us uh, hybridizer or for you as a, as a grower. So as a species, this is the Bernina, and the characteristic for Bernina is, uh, for those of you maybe have been growing for a long time, uh, back in the 80s, this is the type of orchid they, they should classify as Phalaenopsis violacea from the Bronio. Okay, so, but it's like a lot of things, it's been changed over. So the all violacea, the Bronio type, is now called Bernina. So, so if you are looking at this video, uh, maybe from different part of the world, they still call this uh, Violacea. Uh, this is what happened now because every classification of the species, we follow the Kew Garden, uh, which is a England. So everything we everything we found now on, we always call this type of uh, Bernina now. Okay, so. The characteristic for Bonina, and I'm showing you uh, all this right here is our new hybrid, and it is Jeff. You want to type this in? It is our NF two ninety six, and it's our line breeding of our awarded uh, Montclair AMAOS cross with a uh, pollen pairing is called red apple and red apple is a very very interesting uh variety of strain horticultural strain uh of a lot of the br uh, red brush on them and i'm really pleased uh, some many of some of you have gotten uh some jamie jumper for the selected stuff uh i'm very pleased to for we i must grow about maybe three four hundred of this seeding. Uh, obviously, you know, is uh, Montclair AMAOS is my award print, and it got the uh, award from the American Orchid Society as a first bloom seeding when they are just only that, that this size. Okay, so this is very unusual breakthrough because prior to uh, five years ago, most of the uh, Berlina in America, uh, because of site you know, we in the society in post in seventy, uh, we don't have a luxury of getting any more new species or new strain from the native country or from Asia, uh, especially some of the newer uh, because uh, uh, because they cut down a lot of jungle and to get uh, food production. So there's lots of uh, new strain or species coming from that part of the world. So. So if you have been uh, listened to my 
very popular program called New Color Form of the Phalaenopsis species. Uh, it is explained in detail. Uh, but all we have in, in especially in North America, uh, most of the Bonina is actually line breed. And they, I, in my opinion, they become too much inbreeding. So uh, if, if you live in Florida, in South uh, Central Florida, you can tell some of the Bonina that been line bred. Uh, will not flower until they get to this size. It's just uh, that I, I, to me, uh, that is just too big. Uh, especially if in today's, if you live in Pacific Northwest or Northeast, uh, you go under light. It's just one plant. It can be the equal two of this. So this is why the uh, I've been breeding this more compact strand of Bellina and. Having to do that is actually, I was I have a uh, thanks to my friend and network of friend in Asia. They share the pollen parent, uh, pollen uh, the ship from uh, Malaysia or some of their private collection, some of the newer strand, so we can outcross. So the result is now you have banana that can flower in the small plant. This is just first bloom seeding, by the way, and they grow tremendous fast because the pollen. Is not is a, uh, not the not what we call the inbreed strain in America, North America. So it's more vigorous. Uh, they more uh, have what we call the junk uh, the species vigorous. Okay. Now, so if you grow banana, so you actually always look for some of the newer strain of the species strain because not just I. Like, uh, but there's always banana. So always look for banana. If you're in the shopping, always, instead of just banana, you, at the show, you want to ask the breeder what kind of parentages, you know. Obviously, if you have a, uh, if you're looking for a puppy, you want to get the best uh, pedigree, okay. So, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Some other pedigree, if you have a bad uh, breeding of the puppy from the puppy mill, you know, they're not very selective. Then you're gonna have a lot of problem later on. Same thing with orchid. If you're gonna be really serious about growing orchid as a hobby, and on the same given space, might as well get the best possible you can buy on the market. So be an educated consumer, okay? Uh, any of the commercial grower who are really uh, know what they're doing, always have the parents. You know, so this is the Montclair. If they got an award, you know, you want to look for pack pedigree, have been get it award, you know, by whether it's Royal Horticultural Society, uh, American Orchid Society, that would be AOS, uh, JOGA Japan. So you know, or Taiwan, TOGA, you know they're getting been recognized. And it's about average in the eye of those judges and they know what they're doing because you know a lot of them they have a lot of data so so this is what we see here so this is the one that we did before this is the uh, uh, ban uh, banana motorola this is the, the wild species okay this is what we call a fire shape so you can tell this is how big this is how they grow themselves in the wild always mounted on the tree uh, on the, usually on the trunk, okay, they always go sideways. So if you, be, if you live in my uh, central Florida or Orlando, your summer is very similar to uh, Penang or Malaysia or Borneo. It's warm day and warm night. So if you live in uh, the southeast uh, Houston, uh, you know your summer is really hot and humid. Dallas, Alabama, uh, all the south, it's best to grow them tilted, okay. And then you can actually do, uh, uh, if you, because your humidity is so high, you can actually do it at the mountain, on the on the cork, on the wood. Any of the wood doesn't rot too easily. Uh, cedar wood would be a good object, okay. But I'm in California, so I'm uh, we do have a lot of customers uh, across the United States, and I do have a customer. Uh, a viewer is actually in Malaysia to also, and one thing I got received from the com the comment I, when I was in Malaysia is they noticed that 
with two flower and more flower uh, on Bernina in North America. And I, you know why? Because we do have the day and night changes. Okay, in Malaysia with the, with the native is they have warmer day and warmer night, so the flower do get bigger. But they don't get as many flowers as we can in North America because we do have day and night uh, difference. And so that is an advantage uh, for us. And how are we doing so far? Okay. Okay. It's NF2996, okay, and it is amazing, amazing. So I, I uh, it's sort of different style of banana. I, I love that green, the brush, the reddish brush on the petal, okay. And it's, it's so perfect because the, the print, if you go under light, you know, and, and again, with Jeff's light, if you go under light, when these are in flower, because when they in flower, they like actually enjoy more light. So you can actually tilt it, get higher. So they actually a little bit closer to the light bulb, so they get intensified. So you're gonna get more flowers. So if you go on the light, especially Jeff, Jeff's light, uh, botanical light, okay? Uh, uh, or you can actually move the plant to Another light that is actually good for the Catalia, uh, Venda, the botanical light has. So you can actually move them down to the other label. We have higher light label. So get the maximum uh, production. Okay. So, but in, in, in Southern California, I'm a dryer. So I do not, everything is hang water in my nursery. And we have over 20 greenhouses almost two acres of greenhouse and everything is hang water. So if I want to mount this, I will have the almost water than every single day and just impossible. So I always do it in as, as a pot. Now, if you got it mounted like this, you can never worry about the rotting in the crown. Okay, now if you live in Pacific Northeast or Northwest, uh, in a greenhouse, a lot of time, in, especially in the winter time, you tend to get more rotting, some rotting in the winter time because the greenhouse, you have condensation. Condensation is, is, the, is happen when at night, you know, uh, most of us don't keep as warm as like Malaysia. You know, at night they were at like 79 Fahrenheit. Uh, most of us keep the greenhouse only about 65 max uh, to conserve energy. So you have high moisture at night when the sun is set, moisture went up and low land temperature on the top of your greenhouses, you're gonna have condensation. So condensation means the water gonna drop it at night and they're gonna stay there overnight and they're usually not going to dry out in time. Okay, so this is why uh, if you eat uh, in Pacific Northwest, you always water, water, uh, uh, water really early and as much early as possible and make an extra effort. Make sure before you go to bed, make sure the crown has dry out. Or make sure you just tilt it. I usually have to tilt it. Uh, if you have this kind of shallow tray like this, you can actually build a shallow tray like this. Uh, put it in the wall, uh, put it in the shallow tray. After you water it, just tilt it in the angle so that the the leaf got to maximize it. Okay, this is actually a very good way to do an uh, orchid exhibit, uh, going this way, okay? Now, the, what about a problem? Okay, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna detail about watering because there's a lot of older uh, podcasts about the watering, the feeding them, but one thing about I learned about this uh, banana is, this is fresh flower. You can tell these are green in the back. Okay. As soon as they are senesce, and each flower lasts about good minimum four to six weeks, minimum, okay. Once it turn senesce, the flower getting old, they are gonna turn, uh, the ethanine build up. Ethanine is a gas when the plant, the fruit or flower mature, just like your uh, banana. 
you know, when banana are turning from green to yellow, never put ripened banana next to your orchid because the ripened banana or a ripened fruit uh, produce a lot of ethanine. And ethanine is, well, is a uh, gas that causes uh, senescent in the flower. And this is why air circulation is so important in growing orchid. So when you this happen like this, don't let, don't let it hang up there because it's gonna consume more energy. Just mesh, you don't have to use knife, just use a, a pinch, pinch the spike. That way you don't create any physical cut service. Okay, just cut off all the spike. That way, all the energy, you got more light, they will go and devour into the next bud. Okay, and uh, another nice thing about feature about banana is a sequential flower. So you never cut off the spike, just leave it alone. When they are in flower, in season, they need, don't be shy on watering them and feed them because especially when they are in flower, they use a lot of energy. Remember, all this can be booming for several months or years. So they, uh, you, if you lack of the energy, lack of the nutrient, a lot of the uh, uh, feeding, a lot of this older leaf might go yellow or senesce earlier. So if you t look at this, I even have some of the older leaves still hang up there. That means they are uh, they've been fed real well, and I always fed with my own normal socket abdomen nutrient, so it's one nutrient. And as far as the, uh, I don't spray fungicide here, but I always rely on, if you, on um, the five cent solution, always use the five cent solution. Uh, I use a one teaspoon only per month uh, as a drench a month. Okay, that will take care of it. A happy banana, if you look at take it up. Now all this been shine. Look at the, the shine on this. This is all the natural wax from a happy plant. And this natural wax is actually the one that's gonna be the real epidemic, protect the plant from fungi protection. You know, I was there uh, the bank up uh, at the Panem uh, Orchid Society and they also have a nice uh, collection of the wild species and they mounted like this. And I look at it, if you imagine this, who spray fungicide in the jungle? Nothing. And one thing about when I visit all the uh, grower there, all the banana was so happy. Really nice shiny. And the, that sheen is not your application of the, the spray. Those are the built-in wax that actually will protect the plant itself. And that is actually the best defense the plant have. Having spray a lot, and I've been to nursery in the 80s and 90s. Oh my God, some of the nursery I, I was in Hawaii, they spray every week. Okay, so the plant actually pamper. They don't, once they have so much pamper, guess what? They don't develop their own defense system. They become uh, brainwashed or rely on all those chemicals. So leave it alone, just measure sanitation, uh, proper spacing. So by the time we do this, you notice that we always have, if you have a tray like this, uh, when a younger plant, we might put a uh, 12, uh, 12 per plant. Once they get the bigger size, we take out the middle end, or we just put six. Corona. It's proper spacing if you grow it in the pot or under the or under the uh, grow light. And I don't want to emphasize on, on the Polina is if is it's actually at the at your advantages if you go under light. And also like my old late Sonny would say, uh, put it under the heater, a heat mat. Okay. Uh, any other good heat mat, especially the one you can control the night temperature. At the minimum or at night, if you can turn it on to like 65 to 68 degree, it's even better if you're at 70. It's actually will be even like very similar to the ha uh, natural habitat. And your banana, and turn on your light at max, uh, minimum of 12 hours per day, 
your banana will be non-stop all winter long because you will be creating a very similar environment like Panama or in Malaysia. Okay, in our greenhouse, uh, we can't, we don't have, we never designed to have artificial light because the greenhouse was built back in 1986. If I'm rebuild a greenhouse or if I'm building another greenhouse again, I will build one greenhouse that have the latest and newest LED light because the new, the, the new LED light is not your uh, all cool white fluorescent light back in the 70s or 80s. That actually had the ultimate red and blue and Jeff is, is the forefront on those light. And the LED light, they save energy. Okay, they save energy. They don't put out a lot of heat that might, might burn the plant. And so this is why you always ask for reference. There's a lot of uh, LED light on the market, but it's what? Those light are designed by the light manufacturer. And guess what? Many of them never grow, never grow plant. They just have a, a beta, a spectrum. Okay, so none of them are proven. Okay, so what about the problem we, we the banana, okay, beside the, the rotting, uh, the crown rot, which, as I say, if you mount it or tilt it in the angle, I notice when I come back from the trip here, I notice I have more of this burn here. You, you follow? You see here? We might see this on the mature print. Okay, so I know because I was out for almost a month, three weeks traveling. So the cost of this is actually not from fungi disease. Anybody want to guess what it is? Okay, the measure saw. This is usually caused by one point in a growing cycle especially on the older leaf, it got too dry. Even though this is in the moss, uh, we only water the moss maybe every, every in the summertime, maybe only once a week. Or, and I, we, I've been growing this in very, very bright light. Okay, and they were in the very bright light, so the bright light and then air circulation, so they dry out faster. So at one point, of the past three weeks when I was in Asia, they got too dry. So when the, the when they got too dry, whether in the mass media or in the bark media or hydroponic stuff, when the content is dry, if the salt is in there, when the salt means the the salt from the water, uh, salt from the fertilizer, then it did not or got leach out. The, in, the concentration will be higher, almost sometimes even double. So this is a physio physiological response to it because the plant cannot talk and they have no way of get rid of the excess salt out of the system, okay? So when you come in like this, first of all, not everything is brown tip is disease, but you do want to cut them off because when as the leaves are decay on the tip, uh, as the plant tissue decay, they will invite uh, fungi. Okay, so you do want a physically surgical, and I usually use uh, the single braid, and this is clean. At least one inch, about minimum one inch. I sometimes I even do two inch. About the latest one, so you want to. I just follow this. Okay, now another thing about the berry center, if you do have uh, five cents concentrated, I just come back from a, trip, uh, a tour, speaking tour to uh, Orlando. If you live in the area the summertime is really humid, okay, get the tips, concentrated five cents, concentrated five cents, dip it, use a cream Q, Q tip, and on the cut surface, do a seal on them. 
Okay, and then another thing that I learned from this trip in Penang, guess what? Sometimes they cannot get uh, bison in in the area because we do in Asia or part. Not everybody can get Penang like this, and you don't want to get in trouble of doing the fungicide seal. The, another a, a person that shared with me, thank you, in Penang. Anybody have this, right? Or if you might have not have Fison enough, just very easy. You can do this on your Cataria. Just do a seal, and that's very easy. Okay, and about a week later, once they dry up, because every time, this is how the fungi get into it. Every time you have a cut, just like us, we have a cut and there's open wound, there is a way for the fungi to, or even bacteria, to, or to enter it through the wound. So the, that's why the key point is to keep it on the dry side and take it away from your, now you can take it away from your bench area, your, uh, your growing area. Uh, live in a separate area. So they don't got to walk, uh, they don't got the water or mist it for the next seven days. So that giving a time to eel. So this tape method is very good because a lot of time you might not have the fungicide or fison available. So this is good tips. You can do that on the catalea too. When you develop catalea, the backbone, you can seal them up. And also all the cube, uh, all the two in one uh, cakey paste. But for this case, you don't want to put cakey paste on it. Not, it's not going to do anything for them. Okay. Now, what about this older plant? This is actually the this is the soruria form. And again, this is actually summertime. It's a, a good time to. It's a good time to actually uh, clean, uh, look at your good plant. And always this, in fact, all frame your tool that you're gonna use, not just for virus, but also uh, fungi infection. I usually do always do several of them and then let them cool off and set them aside. Uh, the heat treatment is still the best and the easiest one. Okay, so this most likely uh, was going, I was grooming this. I'm going to bring this one here to Oki Show, uh, the hunting show coming up if you go into your Oki meeting. So this is actually uh, a good time to start it. And this is a perfect example on your older plant. As the plant mature, uh, this is some of the older spike. A lot of time, the older spike, if you, not, if you do not get well fed, this is a case, uh, maybe, this should be longer. I think this is maybe about three years already. Uh, maybe it did not get optimum nutrient or we didn't feed enough in the summertime. So uh, they go to this and that, that's okay. So Jeff, you can see this because they do have a lot of honey, produce a lot of honey. So a lot of time you're gonna see this mildew. You see the black mildew coming up here? Okay, and that's okay. This is actually, the mildew is actually not gonna kill the plant. Mildew is actually uh, from the fungi that attract to the honey. So this is the time. I like to use the Corax uh, wax, Corax wipe. It does have some alcohol in there, but also has some uh, Corax, very low doses of Corax, and very easy. Uh, you can also use uh, rubbing alcohol, which is very good. But uh, rubbing alcohol is very dry, so I do not use it on the flowering spike because the, the dry alcohol might uh, blast it the bud when you clean it. Okay, so. And I'm gonna start grooming the print. Um, 
by tilt it, some tilt it so the, the spike not touching the flower stamp is also a good way to prevent the algae, the mildew because the honey produced is not touching it. So I'm going to just grab it here. Now I can even see more of the mildew. So when you take it to judging for the orchid show, uh, presentation is very important. So uh, if you do not use any uh, plant wax on them, because they're for house plant, because they do have uh, wax on them, uh, depending on the type. Most of the wax actually, we're going to uh, clog up the pores on the stem, on the leaf. So here is another case of And I'm going, to do, I'm going to do some trimming. Uh, trimming of the foliage in orchid judging at orchid show is allowed unless it is for cultural or war. But you do want to trim this off. Obviously, if you don't trim it off, uh, you, it might cause you a, a ribbon on them. But it is also very more ornamental. Okay. And I still had a cute tips. Method. Okay. And this one, I'm not going to do cute tips. I'm really fast. I'm just going to I'm going to take, I'm going to seal the the one and tape it down. Really fast. I'll be good for seven days. Okay, and here's another one of the regular uh, banana form. Okay, again, I have some mildew issue. You see here, there's some all mildew here. So this is always clean up the mildew. And you're gonna see a lot of all the leaves have this all, we do have uh, our water here in the summertime, the EC is very, very high because the by the time the water coming from Colorado, they pick up all the calcium. So this is time to uh, clean up all this calcium deposit because they do cut down on the photosynthesis. So this is good time to groom in them. Uh, I wish I can Groom every single print. We just have so many prints. We must have over uh, half a million phalaenopsis alone. Okay, but we do the only time we do it is before we uh, leave the nursery. And the the older print, you see here. This is the this is about four year, four to five years old print. This is the flower strike from last year, so they continue right here. For some reason, our Polina is really late this year because we have a very cool May and June. So, Jeff, you can see this. The new spike is coming. So, in, that's why you never cut off the old spike. The, the new spike coming up, so the old flower is coming up again. So, this is the time to make sure you feed them regularly and especially make it dry. And I'm, I, what I learned before, and a little experiment we did it with Patrick Payton and Prince Edward York, I'm going to do a, a, a extra help with them, is to use Mega Dry as a drench. But at a lower rate, instead of three ounces per gallon, I'm going to use an ounce per gallon. And I can pour them in with the foliage and also into the potting media, whether it's bark or moss. That way, is more uptake from the entire root mass. So I'm going to get more flower on it. more flower and more flower count and that's what it is. So here is another one. It's kind of got tufts in there. So they So it is too young to spike them. So you do want to bend them up. So
So the, the, this immersion spike is actually about the 40. So it, it's, it's, this, is the, this is the stage is too early to spike in. So you want to put this one higher. OK, and set aside. So even this is all from the same C again, guess what? This was actually high under for the 40s, okay? Uh, this is the case because I do grow them very bright. So when you are growing the brighter location, you're gonna push out the flower spike faster, but once the spike push up, it's actually, uh, if you wanna get a spike longer, uh, it's kind of too, a little bit on the dry side, more water, make sure you keep out the water and actually you can move it away from the window if you go on the window or if you are doing the tilted way for under light growing right take down lower limb so by doing so the spike you are getting the spike longer and then you should actually uh, guide or groom the plant toward this way okay ah, so the next one will flower Better. But this is all from C. You can tell that you can see the different leaves pattern. Okay, so this one here, actually, I can tell this is actually both belong very dominant by this uh, Berlina Montclair. But the one with the red apple tend to be a little bit longer, but they had the best flush. So, uh, but that's the fun about the seeding. They are different stages. Look at all this seed. Every one of the leaf pattern is all different. And this is our first bloom. They will get, the flower size will get better and further as the flower mature. So you, this are the topic. So this is actually, uh, uh, well, that's a hybrid, but this is using the, this is a uh, banana hybrid. Primary hybrid with Valencia indigo. So again, you can cut out the spike. So one thing about all this banana and Valencia hybrid is the very, very fragrance. They're very valuable. They're very, very rewarding species to grow. So I hope everybody have a new fresh uh, definition and new way of growing this wonderful species. So uh, if you like this new strain that we have, Jeff have a number, uh, 2996. Uh, 2996 is NF, our, NF. yeah, NF2996 is our newest and latest. And we should be sold out by this year because they've been flying out of the, the nursery. Everybody, uh, I was in Florida and I had some customer, actually they flower because the weather. We had warmer day, warmer night, and the flower is actually bigger than in the greenhouse. So enjoy and just follow all this uh, step. And I see you next week. Uh, we're gonna do the final analysis corn theory, uh, the reform. Uh, see you next week. Thank you for joining us today.